Hi, and welcome to a presentation titled Investigating the Effects of an Active Learning Classroom on the Student Experience. This was a study conducted in fall 2023. My name is Dr. John Kerrigan. I am a lecturer in the Mathematics Department and in the Graduate School of Education at Rutgers University. Hello, I am Joseph Quaik. Um, I was actually a student in the class that we are um, holding a study on in a previous semester, and I'm happy to be here. So um, active learning is not a new concept. Um, designated active learning classrooms have been built at Rutgers for about six, seven years now, um, especially in the Richard Weeks Hall, which we will discuss um, in a moment. Um, and so uh, disruptions during the pandemic halted work that was done in the area. Uh, so COVID kind of halted studies on space design and how that impacts students' perceptions on the space, um, their attitudes, how they feel about the learning experience overall. Um, and so now that students are back to an in-person math learning experience, we wanted to investigate the active learning space and design in greater detail. So uh, the premise here is that active learning classrooms are intentionally designed uh, such that collaborative group work and in-class problem solving activities are encouraged. Um, so sometimes NALC is described as a classroom with uh, whiteboards that go all around the class, um, collaborative lear uh, learning tools, technology tools, um, and chairs around tables. Um, some of them even have large screen monitors that span the classroom, uh, movable chairs around round tables to support group work, um, and even microphones uh, such that students and instructors can kind of communicate about problem solving activities. Uh, so in terms of ALCs versus traditional lecture halls, uh, we've seen that active learning classrooms have been shown to increase uh, average exam scores by half a letter grade um, and to significantly reduce failure rates. Um, we even saw that um, in, you know, in previous literature that students in traditional passive lectures were about 1.5 times more likely to fail versus students in ALCs. Um, other literature suggests that besides just looking at scores, we know that active learning uh, in terms of introducing collaborative activities into the lecture has positive effects on student attitudes in terms of information retainment, um, problem solving, and even their study habits beyond the class. Um, and so this challenges notions that competitiveness involved in individual work um, promotes achievement compared to collaborative work. So in terms of the sample and the setting, uh, we'll be looking at Math 115, which is an accelerated uh, pre-calculus course held at Rutgers. Um, it's a 15-week in-person course with two lectures a week uh, and one recitation. Um, it will be following a flipped classroom format uh, with an engineering applications embedded in the curriculum, meaning that students will be having a look at the material before they go into class, um, so that they're kind of primed uh, to go into class and start working on problems related to the material. Um, and they're all held in active learning classrooms. And so we're looking at uh, like 93 uh, school of engineering students. Most of them are first semester students and they'll all be pursuing the uh, calculus sequence uh, further. Uh, this group in particular is special because they were mostly learning virtually before college um, due to COVID disruptions. And so their freshman, sophomore and junior years were kind of remote, um, at least freshman and sophomore year were fully remote. Um, junior year might have been about half remote. Um, and now they're finally in an in-person college setting. So uh, here's a picture of the exact setting which our study was held in. This is room 206 at the Richard Weeks Hall of Engineering Building on the Bush campus at Rutgers. Um, this is actually a newer engineering building built in the fall of 2018. Uh, so it's kind of freshly done. Um, and of course, they incorporated these active learning classrooms into them. Uh, so if you have a look at the actual picture, um, you can see power outlets and HDMI cables at every single table. Um, so students can actually plug in an HDMI cable into the laptop and project work um, onto any one of the screens. Um, if you notice, there are screens that are kind of situated by every single table. Every single one of these tables are round tables where students are encouraged to collaborate. Uh, nine students can sit at every single one of these tables, but they can kind of be split into thirds um, such that they can make three groups and work on problems together. Uh, if you have a look, you can kind of see um, all the way to the left under a table there. Uh, there are kind of whiteboards hanging off the table. Um, so there's going to be a personal whiteboard under every single table such that students can actually uh, you know, just go under real quick and pull out that whiteboard and begin working on a problem at any time. Uh, um, and so uh, in terms of the TVs, there are 11 displays all around in which the instructor can kind of display different images to. Um, so we can be projecting things from, you know, uh, kind of ed tech tools that uh, can display different math problems or perhaps activities. Um, and so every single student can kind of see that and they can see it right by their table. Uh, and students can actually push their laptop up to a TV, uh, like we mentioned with that HDMI cable. 
the instructor's desk is not pictured awfully well here, um, but it's actually going to be in the middle. It will not be at the front. You actually don't have a front of class um, in terms of the traditional sense where a podium is at the front and the instructor is giving a lecture. Um, and that kind of gives the instructor more of a facilitator role um, of this kind of like active learning space and the collaborative work between students. <clears throat> so as we've discussed, uh, now that we're done with COVID, uh, we're interested in seeing how this particular group of students uh, perceptions of the ALC will be. Um, and so the question is plainly stated, uh, what are students' perceptions of learning in an active learning classroom? So in terms of the data collection, uh, we'll be hosting a Qualtrics survey. Uh, actually, it was already hosted um, at the end of semester, at the end of the semester. Uh, and so that's actually held during class time to make sure that all students are going to be responding to that. Um, there were 19 questions delivered on Qualtrics. Um, and uh, you know, 18 of them were Likert scale multiple choice questions. There was one open-ended question. Uh, that open-ended question allows students to give any additional comments or thoughts or feedback they have about the course, um, or specifically in relation to the space design. How do they feel about the round tables? How do they feel about the whiteboards? Um, we actually got some great responses to that, and Dr. Kerrigan will go over those in a second. Um, you know, uh, but including comments as well that are not even limited to just the furniture. But you know, that was a great emphasis. Um, and just a sample of one of these questions would be. Uh, you know, given a choice, sorry, given a choice, uh, how would an active learning classroom affect your uh, decision to take a course in the future? Um, this is a question that I particularly resonate with. Um, I had been just discussing this with Dr. Kerrigan before uh, the presentation. After I had taken Math 115 at Rutgers, I kind of thought like, okay, um, you know, next semester, I, I want to plan it out to make sure that I have an ALC um, that I'm taking calculus in uh, because it did really positively affect my, affect my experience. So um, that's just an example of that. Thank you. So as um, Joe mentioned, we did keep the research question very broad in general. We had two sections of this course for a total of 93 students, and both of them were held in the room that Joe described. So we didn't have a like a control group and an experimental where one class did have the ALC and one didn't. So we, we couldn't really run any type of comparison um, using grades or perceptions or anything like that we just wanted to see you know now that these students who are mostly remote during high school how do they feel about this kind of space and what does it look like for their learning and with the help of the Rutgers active learning community they were really helpful in giving us some survey questions and prompts and things that they thought would be a good way to kind of measure how students feel about their learning the classroom and things like that so we do want to give them a shout out for um, helping us with the the survey design once we gave our survey at the end of the course, you know, we waited till the last week, we gave students time in class, we, we tried to get every single student um, to do it <laughs> to the best of our ability. We first exported the data from Qualtrics, looked at basic descriptives, mean, median, standard deviation on the, the Likert scale questions. We then looked at uh, some cross tabs and correlations to investigate any kind of relationships that might exist between questions. We looked at some significance testing to see if there were any significant relationships. And then for the open-ended question, we employed semi-open coding to look for emerging themes and try to come up with uh, a story on how our students felt about learning in an active learning classroom. For our semi-open coding, we went in with a an idea of what the students will be referring to. So we, we kind of went in with the lens of, technology environment, the instructional design, overall feelings about the course, and then um, you know other things that might pop up. So we ended up with five um, bucket codes that we defined and then included examples of. So a lot of comments were about environment and you know those would refer to quotes that included the word setting, atmosphere, technology. We, we coded if we saw the mention of TVs, um, you know, charging ports, any of the tech related features. Um, for instructional design, that was more related to the flipped classroom, the instructors and the LA's approach to working with students, course experience, how people kind of perceive the course. And then miscellaneous was just other comments that students had. It was about the chairs, uh, the table size, things like that. So those were, those were interesting to pick up for sure. 
So in terms of findings, the first question we asked students to take a look at was for them to kind of read their level of learning that they experienced in the course, where um, one end point was surface level learning, and then um, the other end point, nine, was um, deep learning. So I think it was on a scale of one to nine. And the students, uh, by and large, or, or one through 10, rather, um, the students, by and large, rated their learning at, at a very, very deep level. And we found that, you know, again, students' perceptions of their own learning aren't infallible. You know, it, it, it's their perception of how they learn. But we, we did notice that there was a, a statistically significant in, indication of deep learning over surface level memorization. We ran a little t-test to, um, to validate this. So we looked at a one sample t-test comparing students' readings to the continuum midpoint of five, and we got a significant difference um, with that. So we were excited to see that. We had students read, um, thanks to Qualtrics, we got this nice uh, bar graph, um, their interest in the subject matter before the class started versus now. And um, the, the first bar graph that goes sideways, um, the, the pink part is high interest before the course started. Um, the blue is, sorry, the pink one is very high interest. The blue one is just high. The purple one is moderate. The green one is low, and then the orange one is non-existent. And if we look at how their interest in the subject matter changed over time, we see that the, the levels of very high and high interest spiked up as the course went on, and the levels of low to no interest dropped down. And we, we looked at um, you know, a, a, a paired t-test there as well, looking at each individual student and their um, their level of interest on a scale of one to five, um, we did see that there was a significant difference from um, start to end, of course, in interest in the course. We also had, um, just for, for some information, we asked students to indicate their level of agreement with a variety of statements. And this uh, was interesting. A lot of students felt confident that they could turn to another peer and ask for help during class, that other students took their ideas seriously during in-class activities if they were to, to provide um, an explanation or an idea, that they were able to explain their learning to someone else after working on class activities. They generally look forward to coming to class, even though we had Halloween and, and all those other things pop up in the fall. And um, what was most interesting was we threw in a, a question in this group that was a little bit different. Um, you know, obviously we wanted them to respond very favorably to being able to explain things and looking forward to coming to class, et cetera. But the last question was, I just wish we had been told what we needed to know rather than being asked to like work in groups and figure it out ourselves. And that's where the, the colors change. That's where we see students did not want to just be told what to do. Um, they, they by and large preferred um, trying to figure out things on their own or with the group. So that was um, that was really interesting for us to see. And we think it is related to the setup of an active learning classroom where everyone's seated at a table of nine and the instructor is in the middle and we have learning assistants to support the learning in the room as near peers. So to, to just quantify some of these findings, um, high level of confidence when um, asked to figure out things, the average there was 4.07, and that was on a scale of one to five. Positive feedback about post-group activity discussions, being able to explain concepts to others. Um, students' perceptions of um, uptake of their ideas by other peers was also moderately positive. Students generally look forward to coming to class on a scale of one to five. Um, you know, it was math in the evening. They were um, all freshmen, so that was really cool to see. So they have a, a, a positive attitude toward the learning environment. And then that last row where we saw the colors kind of um, change a little bit, there was a, a balanced view on the preference of being told what to know versus figuring out things through group activity. So that's where we saw, um, you know, there, there was a, a trend there where more kids kind of wanted to figure things out on their own, but then some wanted to be told too. 
we weren't seeing means in the fours like we were on the other questions. We looked at um, some correlations. We saw some significant associations among aspects of, of, of the active learning classroom. Um, some of our findings included students who reported higher confidence in understanding challenging concepts were also more likely to demonstrate an ability to explain main ideas to others after group activities. We saw a positive correlation between students' anticipation of coming to class and their enjoyment of group activities, suggesting that um, there was a connection between positive attitudes and engagement in collaborative learning in the active learning setting. There was a significant positive relationship between students' enjoyment of attending class and understanding the, the course's learning goals. That was another question on our survey. So that also emphasizes the importance of effective engagement on academic success in the active learning classroom. And then um, that last question with the weird um, breakdown of just wanting to be told things, we saw some negative correlations when we looked at students' responses to that prompt with, with the other ones about liking to come to class and, and feeling confident about explaining things to others. So that was interesting to see there as well. Um, we asked a couple more questions that we just wanted students to um, rate their level of agreement on, on a scale of one to five, strongly disagree to strongly agree. Um, the first one, I, I was really interested in, in seeing what students felt about that. Um, the statement was, the classroom experience is too chaotic. I'm sure many students came from environments where they were sitting in rows and desks and, and it had to be quiet. And then in this room, there was always noise. People were always talking, working in groups, TVs, phones, you know, the whole bit. And they really strongly disagreed that... Um, that the classroom environment was too chaotic. Over, over half of the students strongly disagreed with that statement. Um, and very, very, very few people felt that it was chaotic with um, active learning happening in the classroom. And then if you invert that um, for learn understanding the learning goals of the course, very few students did not understand. Like I think it was one and one here. Um, but students by and large knew the learning goals of the course by being a part of the active learning classroom. This one was interesting. This was kind of balanced on, on both sides. Other students have a stronger grasp of the material than I do. So that was another opportunity for students to stop and kind of rate their understanding of the material, thinking about their other peers in the class whom they worked with over the term. So that was a little bit more um, symmetrical with, with that distribution of responses. And then this last part, I interact with the instructor in this class more than I do in other classes. That also had a large number of students saying, yes, I, I do agree that in this kind of setting, there's more time for one-on-one -on -one with the instructor. Um, it was not as great as I would have liked. Um, I, I would have liked these to be a little bit lower, but then again, you know, these classes are large. These students could be in classes that have 10 or, or 20 or, or 30 in, in, in a smaller setting. So, um, more interaction might occur more readily there because of class size, but um, this was a large enrolled course. So um, I think considering it's not bad, but obviously it's an area to work on in the future. So this slide just kind of summarizes with, with some numbers. We, we took these and just looked at overall descriptives um, about learning. So uh, by and large, again, students really understood learning goals, did not feel the room was chaotic, um, we had that weird, uh, about almost normal <laughs> distribution of responses with um, how students feel their content knowledge relates to other students' content knowledge in the course. And then about 69% of students reported interacting with their instructor in the active learning classroom more than with other instructors they have. We looked at a couple other relationships between questions and uh, specifically with the, the statement on understanding course learning goals, there were some positive correlations there. Students, um, sorry, statistical, statistically significant results there. Um, not surprisingly, students who reported a higher level of interaction with the instructor indicated a better understanding of the course's learning goals. We ran a chi-square test on that. And students who disagree with the active learning classroom being too chaotic also generally reported a better understanding of the course's learning goals. When looking back at the first set of questions, 
the strongest significant relationship emerged between students reporting, being able to figure out a troublesome concept and um, level of agreement with peers being more knowledgeable. We thought that was um, that was interesting as well. So um, it, it's this balance of working in groups on a task and being comfortable with going to someone else next to ask for a hint or to ask for to feedback or um, to work on a problem together. So we really we really enjoyed that finding. There were another set of questions that we had on the um, on the survey that talked about interpersonal dynamics. We were interested in seeing how much students interacted with one another inside the classroom and outside the classroom. We found that 95% of respondents acknowledged the opportunity to acquaint themselves with previously unfamiliar classmates. They met new people. They made new friends. Um, within this group of students who, who responded this way, 55% of them reported engaging in study sessions with their newfound peers outside the active learning classroom. And then about 60% of them said they even engaged in social activities with their peers outside the active learning classroom, like going to the dining hall together or going to um, wherever <laughs> together, um, an on-campus activity. So that was um, you know, something that the active learning community suggested that we look at, like what, what did this look like in terms of students meeting students and doing other things with them. So we were, we were pleasantly surprised that there, there was some friendship building with there. Um, regarding the frequency of external study sessions, 63% of students disclosed occasional study collaborations with their peers. So that was, you know, I studied with somebody once or maybe for one exam. And then about 25% of students in the active learning classroom reported more ongoing um, study engagement. So they, they might have studied for two or three midterms plus the final or, or went to an LA study group on a regular basis. So that was nice. 81% um, of students acknowledged engaging in study sessions with their pre-calc peers for other courses, which was also a great result. You know, we, we had all SOE students, so it's very possible that because these students share chemistry and physics and um, the intro to engineering courses and maybe even writing, they, they felt comfortable enough to study with them for other subject areas as well. And these are just some nice um, bar graphs for how students responded. So um, how many people from the course did you ever study with outside of class, regardless of um, where you met them? And a lot of students reported one to three times. And then how frequently did you study with them outside of class? Uh, a, a lot of students, once again, reported a few times during the semester. A handful were once a week. And then another handful were once. And then a very small handful were more than once per week. So some students had that ongoing um, relationship with, with their peers in the class for studying. Um, last, um, help seeking from the instructor varied more greatly among students than um, for, with, with the instructor versus with another peer. 45% of students responded by asking the instructor questions. Sometimes 22% said they asked the instructor every class, 27% said rarely, and 6% said never. And, um, you know, the, these things happen. Some students are more comfortable asking a, a classmate. Some are more comfortable asking a learning assistant, etc. Um, responses to ending questions about overall experience were very positive. There was a question that I asked, given a choice, how would an active learning classroom affect your decision to take a course in, in that kind of setting again in the future? And 80% said they would seek a classroom space like this. And 17% said it wouldn't affect their decision. And then 3% said, no, this is not for me. And then um, what a, a good statistic also for us was 96% of students agreed that the in-class activities, assessments, et cetera, that they had along the way, like the formative type assessments, really prepared them for the bigger high stakes assessments of, of the midterms and the common final. For the open-ended questions, open-ended question on the survey about additional feedback, we left that very open-ended for the students. And we found that a very large majority of students were, were satisfied 
They talked about making friendships, feeling it was an enjoyable experience. The places where they felt they that it could be improved were tied to the TVs. They wanted to engage with the TVs a little bit more than just the instructor pushing out content on the TV. So um, that was something noted for the future. But they did like the fact that no matter where they were sitting, they could turn to the TV directly in front of them or, or look at a different one at a different place in the room. Um, they commented very positively about the flipped classroom style and, and the personal attention that this environment afforded and um, really talked a lot about the instruction, the LAs in the class, having someone always to ask for help. That was a, a big part of um, the success of the model. Um, some overall takeaways that we, that we found from both the, the quantitative and the qualitative, they students really did feel this was a, a really highly effective learning experience. Uh, one of the comments on the open-ended said, this feels like a high school class. And that could go either way sometimes, but the student um, said it in a positive way. They felt like it, it was structured, it was kind of predictable, there was personal attention, and um, reinforcements helped them do well on exams. They didn't feel like they were thrown to the wolves. On the open-ended question, there were some calls for smaller tables. Uh, I think one or two students felt maybe nine was a lot. So we might need to do some more work with trying to make that group feel smaller. As Joe mentioned, the tables are set up so that you can break them up into threes. So maybe some more work in, in taking advantage of triads will be helpful. Students love the swivel chair. They love the wall-to-wall -wall whiteboards, um, and they just felt like it it, it was a, a good experience overall. We had very, very, very few people say that they, they would have preferred sitting in a room with rows and a podium. So in, in terms of implications, I, I did have a chance to run some of this by um, the, the active learning community about the students' comments about using the, the tools in the room a little bit better. So one of the, the takeaways we had was maybe putting a QR code or a blurb at each table, showing them how they could use the, the ports and the TV and some of the features there. So that um, even, the, you know, we do do this during the first week of class, but maybe some more ongoing or readily available information can help students take advantage of the, the tools in the room. The table of nine, for some, they felt that was a little bit big. So maybe purposefully designing activities that involve the, the triads in the room could be, could be a better way to make the room feel smaller. And then we just saw a lot with positivity. Like a lot of students talked about that it was a positive learning environment. And whatever we could do as teachers to, to reinforce that, whether it's confidence in content, confidence in being able to explain ideas to others, being willing to work with others in and outside the room, any measures that um, teachers and learners can take to reinforce that is, uh, is something we took away from this study as well. So that's that's all we have. Um, I think in, in a future study, we would like to look at exam grades and, and additional measures where we can do more comparison, but we wanted to do this initial foray into what do the kids think? Right, like they, they're the consumers in the room and we design it to try to help them, but what, what do they have to say about it? And we, we kind of liked what they had to say and we'd like to see if we can um, get some more information from them in a future semester. So thank you very much for coming to our presentation and we hope to connect with you guys in the future.